Welcome back to an academy. This is Deepak Krishna VM, ME Structural Engineering AMI uh, Verified Educator. So in today's lesson, we are going to see one of the special concrete, the high strength concrete. Right? We're going to see some of the basic facts about the concrete and let's see what what else is in the lesson. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Academy. Also follow us through the other platforms like Facebook app and the website. So let's start. Hello everyone, good to see you. I hope you're having a good day. So throughout in this course, we have been seeing a lot of properties and a lot of relationship based on the strength of concrete, all right? So in today's lesson, we are going to see a special type of concrete, okay? One among the special concrete, which emphasis on the strength of the concrete, all right? The high strength concrete. So from the name itself, we can have a small idea about what this is going to be. So let's start. So first and foremost, we know that a concrete is a material or a building material which consists of the fine aggregates, coarse aggregates, water and cement if required admixtures are added. Okay, so so that thing is known as the, that material formed by uh, mixing of all those ingredients are know, is known as the normal concrete. Alright, I just... Uh, it is used almost in almost all the construction in nowadays for the domestic purposes and also for the small scale purposes. All right. But as the time progressed, as usual, and also as the science and technology progressed, as the demand increased, uh, there, there has been a different type take on the concrete technology. So this way that they, they started making or they started designing new type of concrete, dip, uh, new types of concrete, depending upon the need and depending upon the design. Okay. So there are a lot of special so those concretes were known as the special concrete okay those concretes have uh, really something special in them that means that some of the properties will be enhanced or some of the properties will be retarded okay or maybe it's it's useful for some specific purposes only so such concretes are known as special concretes so how what is how was they made okay so that means that when the ingredients of normal concrete are altered in specific proportions in accordance to our needs the special concretes are formed. Okay, so how they were done? They were done by altering the materials used, by changing the methods of casting, placing, and curing. Okay, environmental conditions, and necessity, and demand. Okay, so these were some of the factors that influenced the uh, creation of special concrete. All right, so these were some of the, some of the factors that uh, based on which the special concretes were designed. So those were some of them. All right. So today we are going to see, as I mentioned before, one among the special concrete is known as the high strength concrete. Okay. So let's start. So the high strength concrete. So as we all know, we all look for the definition if you are looking, if you are going to study about a technical term or about a technical, uh, a technical subject. All right. So if you look for the uh, definition for the high strength concrete, it's very interesting that there is no universal definition for the high strength concrete. Sounds interesting, right? Let's see why it is. So let's see why it is so. So to understand that, let's have, let's start from the starting point. Okay. So is, it was during the 70s and it was during the uh, 70s that uh, this, this, type, this term was coined. Okay. The high strength concrete. So during that time, the maximum, the maximum normal strength for concrete was 40 megapascal. Okay. So that was the very high st standard strength in those times. So the concrete above those strength was termed as the high strength concrete. Okay. So when the time passes, that, uh, sc that scale, that 40 mega, me megapascal scale changed. Okay, that is from, it changed from 40 to 60, uh, 60 to 100 megapascal. Okay, so that means 60 to 100 became the uh, high strength concrete after a while. When the skyscrapers and from the high race bridges, from the high flyovers were taking the construction industry by storm. So, okay, okay so during this time, the, those were considered as the high strength concrete. All right, is it so? Because uh, the term high strength uh, concrete is, depends upon the per, the uh, pl uh, the committee that put forward the uh, definitions in the code books. Okay, so all the code books are based upon uh, environmental conditions, about the testing condition, about the uh, based on the materials available of a particular region. Okay, F for for example, if you take the Indian standards, Indian standards are based upon the Indian conditions. If you take the Euro code, it's based on the European conditions. Okay, if you take the Japanese code, it's based on the Japanese conditions. So as the condition changes, this strength changes. So from e region to region, this high strength 
uh, high strength limit has been changed so that that's the main reason why there is no particular definition for the high strength concrete or we can say that there is no particular borderline for the high strength concrete okay now according to is 456 2000 let's see some of the classification that is from m20 to m10 to m20 it's known as the ordinary concrete all right 25 to 55 it's known as the standard concrete 60 to 80 is high strength concrete and 80 about maybe up to 140 or 130 it's known as the ultra high strength concrete all right so ultra high strength concrete are some of the rarer cases so high strength is some of the common cases that we can see in almost all the places all right now let's see what what's next now let's see some of the characteristics of this high strength concrete all right let's move on and let's see how what are the characteristics of high strength concrete so the first and foremost is the low water semen ratio so the water semen ratio for the high strength concrete is almost less than 0 0.35 so let's see why it is this is done to first and foremost done to control the excess hydration water okay that means that uh, so if you remember in the previous lesson we have seen a phenomena called as internal bleeding okay so that means that i'll explain to you one that happens right now so i'll explain to you right now so what 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 happens in there that so if there is an excess hydration water uh, i mean the excess water present inside the concrete matrix the water get traps uh, trapped uh, under the uh, coarse aggregate okay so it get trapped under the coarse aggregate from there it it won't be it it will be immobile it will be trapped there for a long time and uh, when the evaporation takes place okay they they create pores okay they will be creating voids that means that pores will be created so when the pores are created it increases the porosity of the concrete so when the porosity of the concrete is increased there is a decrease in the strength okay so to uh, to counter that the water semen ratio has been reduced that is less than 0 0.35 is the accepted value for the high strength concrete all right so how can it be done? So it can be done by either reducing the water content or by increasing the cement content inside the concrete matrix. All right. So taking about the talking about the cement content, our next point is the usage of large amount of cement and fine products. Okay, which means that there is a huge amount of usage of amount of cement of uh, usage of cement and fine products. Okay. So why is it so? First and foremost, to uh, reduce the water semen ratio. This is one among one of the methods. All right. So this is a type of the of a concrete that requires more amount of paste. Okay. So more amount of paste is required. So we need more cement. Okay. But if more and more cement is added, there is a lot of there is some dis disadvantages for that. Okay. The, which makes the cement, uh, which makes the uh, paste so thick, but it will be so so uneconomical okay for in that case often mineral admixtures are also introduced okay so some of the mineral admixtures are silica fume and fly ash okay so why it is introduced uh, what the some of the basic reasons are first and foremost economy second it's available it's plenty available third fly, uh, material like fly ash is a waste so it can be a, used as a waste management tactics also and the fineness is very much high okay so uh, some of the mineral admixtures, so unlike mineral admixtures, there are, there are also instances that uh, other products are also used, okay, to increase the paste content. So some of the products may be are cementitious. Some that means that some some have cementitious properties. So that means it will help in the secondary hydration, okay, and the formation of CSS gel. So that means more gel is formed, more amount of paste is there, so which helps in the more bonding capacities, okay, and some of them just are not cementitious product but it will just uh, settle down in the pores okay just like the fly ash fly ash is so fine that it will settle down inside the pores and hence the porosity will be decreased and also there is a good finish for the concrete also so pro uh, so s usage of such products can settle down the porosity and there are another kind of products which are neither cementitious or neither some doesn't have much properties but they are so fine that they can be used to increase the paste content by just their presence okay something like a uh, shredded wool okay like uh, like uh, you know like powdered wood sometimes but it's a very rare case but generally uh, stone dust is preferred in such cases okay so that means that they're very fine they don't they 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 don't participate in the positronic reaction but they can be used for the uh, for the increasing the paste amount by just their presence only okay so that's one among the type so that's how the uh, usage of cement and fine products other fine products uh, has is the characteristics of uh, this is a characteristic of this high strength concrete okay 
Now let's move on to the next characteristic that is the high dosage of super plasticizers. Okay, so as we all know, there is a low workability. I mean, the, there is a low water cement ratio, and also there is a presence of other materials like increased cement content and also increased other powdered contents. Okay, so what will result in that? So from this itself, we we have a small idea that the workability will be affected in a very large amount. Okay, so so we need a so that's a condition where we ha we need to have more workability and also that water cement ratio that low water cement ratio should be maintained in such cases super plasticizers are our best friends okay so here more paste can be re can be reduced the here more paste which reduces the workability so in such cases super plasticizers can help us a lot uh, it will maintain that water cement ratio that means that that low water cement ratio will be maintained as such but it won't alter the workability uh, in fact, it will improve the workability of the concrete. All right, so it will help us to make that uh, mixture more homogeneous and more thick. Okay, that means that the compaction, as well as the mixing, as well as the placing, and all other side activities will be very very simpler by addition of super plasticizers. All right, so another important factor is or important characteristic is the low maximum size of the aggregate the aggregate used the size of the aggregates used are small okay the limit of the size of the aggregate that used is small okay so we all know that the size of the aggregate and the strength of the concrete are inversely proportional to each of them okay that means that if we use bigger the si uh, bigger aggregates the defects happening will be more bigger which means that there won't be much enough packing inside the what can we see in the so concrete matrix? So there is no enough packing means there won't be there will be presence of huge amount of voids in it. So that's a flaw which result in the reduction of strength. Okay, when the crack appears, that means that that uh, interstitial st uh, interstitial transition zone will be weak in such cases. And also, uh, if the aggregate size are too high, which means that the surface area will be too much uh, very low. Surface area will be lower, which result in the uh, low formation of gel that means the low formation of paste because the paste will be formed in a such a low amount okay and also uh, the workability of the concrete will also be increased okay so hence it cannot be mixed properly the bonding will be very poor in such cases which can lead to the uh, poor, uh, poor bonding and reduction of the strength okay so in such cases also again the cracks so developed will be so quick and so progressive that it can result in the earlier rupture of the concrete all right so hence in in this type of concrete uh, the size of the aggregate the limit of the size of the aggregate is very very less okay so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed today's lesson and also pardon me there is only one more condition that is a low air content okay so air entrain uh, has its own advantages but here we cannot enjoy those advantages why Increased air content will uh, contribute to the increase in the porosity. Okay, so which means that it affects the strength in a very adverse manner if it is not proportioned properly. Okay, so in case of freeze and thawing, adequate air content should be provided also. That means that the air content should be provided in a proper supervision. Okay, so these are some of the uh, percentages of air that, should, that can be added for the different conditions. Okay, so I hope you understand this. This is legible and clear. So that's all for today. I hope you understand today's lesson. Thank you once again for tuning in. Please comment your suggestions. Please rate my presentation. Please rec recommend and share the slide. And also, please check my profile in the N Academy platform. I've done some works over there too. Uh, so thank you once again. Until next time, I wish you a great day. Ciao.